Hello there, I'm Dr. Simon Woodstock Giles. I was just catching up on the employee handbook, and I must say, it's harder to get through than a Dickens novel. Anyway, thank you for joining us today. I know how important your lunch must be to you, so please sit back, relax, and enjoy an informative lesson on HTML, CSS, and accessibility. Growing and learning and learning in piles with Dr. Simon Woodstock Giles. Okay, thank you for joining us this afternoon. Once again, my name is Dr. Simon Woodstock Giles. Please hold your applause. And I will be your guide through the exciting world of XHTML, CSS, and accessibility standards. As always, we will have a special guest later on in the presentation, so please do sit tight for that. Um, we hope you find the presentation both informative and entertaining. Oh, I'm excited already! Browsers have come a long way since the dark ages of the World Wide Web. Today, many browsers offer a rich user experience, a wide range of customizable features, and support for the latest web standards according to the World Wide Consortium. Sadly, others, not so much. When developing applications for the web, known to leads as web apps, it is important to think of one's users first and foremost. Today's users are a true hodgepodge, using a variety of browsers on all kinds of devices. Now, while it is true that Internet Explorer currently dominates the market, there are many ways modern users can access the web. It would be downright codswallop, poppycock, and balderdash to discount these people from your business plan. You see, by failing to support browsers like Safari, Firefox, and Opera, or neglecting PDAs and screen readers, we're never giving those users a chance to enjoy the products we build. You may be wondering, Dr. Giles, why should we spend the time getting our apps to work in browsers that account for only a fraction of the market? Well, as you will see, by developing our products using modern web standards, we can reach a much wider audience. Instead of developing for just one browser, for instance, one can be developing for a whole slew of browsers simultaneously. To further demonstrate the importance of this, I'd now like to bring out a very special guest. Ladies and gentlemen, TV's Tom Selleck. Hello. Hello. Hi. I am TV's Tom Selleck. And I'm here to whip your 4.01 transitional, non-validating into shape. It's not going to be easy. Uh, actually, it is. Like I said, it's not going to be easy. But that doesn't mean it can't be fun. Hank, hit it. Attention. Amazing. Incredible. All right, let's get started. First things first, uh, you can get my entire collected works on the subject, HTML, from my website. It uh, should be popping up right around here. Take your time. All right, enough chit-chat. Let's get right into it, huh? Are you ready? Huh? I hope so, because here I come! Are you a noob? If you think using tables instead of CSS is a good idea, then you're certainly acting like one. And TV's Tom Selleck knows that the only way to score lots of hot women is to be using XHTML in your websites. I'm talking to you, Javon. What? Javen. As I was saying, I... Uh... Maybe you could mention how this would be useful in a business environment. Right, right. Uh, do you have a hot secretary? No! Do you have a product that lists things on eBay? Don't a lot of people use eBay? Then why limit yourself to just one browser? Does Walmart only have one door? Do they only cater to the able-bodied? Of course not. I've seen more physically disabled wandering around Wally World at 3 a.m. than I do when I visit the in-laws. There's a huge market out there. All you have to do is tap it. Your average user sees this. The not-so-average user, we'll call them above average, sees this. The browser, poor guy, sees this. And the lady limping back from Walmart sees this. Uh, she's blind, so she's going to use a screen reader. And all those images you name space or one that don't have alt tags tell little miss so-and-so that you hate blind people. Way to go.
Accessibility doesn't mean just blind people with screen readers, though. It includes making your website readable in print form as well. Or on a projector. Or a PDA. Or a cell phone. Or a sword phone. <laughs> By creating well-formed XHTML and teaming it up with some super hot style sheets, you can achieve the kind of scalability you've only dreamed of. And if your websites can be displayed on more devices than the other guy, then you've got a real good shot at picking up some extra users. Maybe even some ladies. Maybe a whole lot of ladies. No. Now TV's Tom Selleck knows that in order to talk the talk, you need to walk the walk. So I'm gonna go ahead and lay out how even you can be accessible. How you can write for accessibility. <laughs> First, it's important to have text-based alternatives for images that contain information for the user. This way, if images are disabled, like they are for blind people, they won't be missing anything. Furthermore, by using relative units in your style sheet, you can help out all the grannies out there utilizing the increased font size options in their browsers. Title tags provide tool tips for users and can help the visually impaired. By including these things in your web apps, they'll not only make your current users happy, but you'll be making your future users happy as well. And of course, it goes without saying that you'll be making me happy, too. That's right. With all these good feelings floating around, you won't know what to do with yourself. You'll likely want someone with the knowledge, the skill, and the power. So I, come I, over I, I'm afraid that's all the time we have, actually. I'm hungry. Where's my sandwich? Well, I'd like to thank you for your time in participating in this very uh, colorful presentation. On behalf of myself, Dr. Simon Woodstock Giles, our special guest TV's Tom Selleck, and everyone here at Growing and Learning, I'd like to wish you a wonderful day. Jason? My pleasure.